As spectators, we bear witness to only snippets of what a TT racer sees. We get a flash in the pan of excellence. They get lap after lap of high definition, pin sharp, blurry brilliance. Every lap is special, but the fastest laps require something extraordinary. What do those fastest laps mean to those that saw them and eventually broke them? For me, it's a bit like, you know, you knew where you were when the Queen died, you knew where you were when Princess Diana died. I knew where I was when I saw the first 120 mile an hour lap. I was in the first 125 mile an hour lap, I was second or third in that race, and I did the first 130 myself, so to see the 135, for me, the big milestones, big things. Dean know. Harrison away. Is the man that a lot of people have tipped to take this race win. Peter Hickman, can he grab win number two? Yeah, the 135 mile an hour lap, it was, a talking point a lot that year. I didn't think the 135 would go. I thought, you know, mid 3 4, maybe high 3 4. I think Michael had the lap record at a 33 9, maybe, I think. And it had stood for a little while. And then Dean went and absolutely smashed it in the first race of the week. 134 4, I'm pretty sure he did in the first Superbike race. And then all of a sudden it was all about 134, as I managed to do it on a stocker in the Superstock race. To think. Somebody who's gone around the TT course at over 135 mile an hour is like serious. Mind boggling, isn't it? So here comes Dean Harrison to complete lap three. And Peter Hickman reduced that gap even further. Dean is pushing very hard, as they both are. Both riders have won TTs this week, both riding brilliantly. But again, it had to be the last lap of the last race. With two guys smashing, in, you know, at it, hammer and tong, which they were. I can't comprehend what you need to do to do that lap because it's beyond it's beyond me, it's beyond my ability. Especially considering when I've watched it back and he's had so much traffic in that lap as well, so it could have even been qu quicker again. So like I said, it's a remarkable lap, and it? it's crazy when you think about it. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> for them to go like be nothing in it for the start of lap six, roll his sleeves up again after doing five laps, which is bloody hard you just got to accept that it's not going to be safe and you've got to push beyond a normal limit. What a final lap this is! This Dean Harrison goes into Balakrain. We see the gap open up each time up to Ramsey. Dean Harrison's got to push, push, push. Hickman into Balakrain. The battle is on. Harrison versus Hickman. Dean Harrison, two seconds inside the lap record at Glen Helen. This could be Dean Harrison's race. These riders entering uncharted territory, riding the Isle of Man course quicker than anyone has done before. If there's ever going to be a 135, that was a lap. Because they weren't right line until they got to the mountain and they just nailed it over the mountain. But... If the story of this race goes as the previous five laps does, it will be Peter Hickman's race. Peter Hickman leads a tenth of a second ahead of Dean Harrison. He's five seconds inside the lap record, so 135 miles is on. Will it be Dean Harrison? Will it be Peter Hickman with 135 miles an hour? When it comes together like that, it, that's when magic happens, you know, and it, it was mega race. 
put the icing on the cake with the 135. So Dean Harrison crosses the line, we've got away for Peter Hickman. Oh, Peter oh, Hickman, no. traffic again, traffic again. So here comes Peter Hickman across the line. He wins the senior TT at 135.4 miles an hour. At the time, to win the race, you know, all cards on the table on the last lap. It ended up being 135 miles an hour. The buzz around the old place were like, what? Done what? You know, were like, that, that can't be right. You know, it was unbelievable. It was amazing. Nobody was expecting it, but it happened, you know. It just keeps moving the goalpost, doesn't it? And, and I think we need, you know, if no one kept pushing things, then we would become stagnant, maybe. So it kind of stirs the pot a little bit and drives people, and, and it also helps you believe in yourself. You know, you know what is achievable, you know. That is achievable. How am I going to do that? How am I going to get to that? Sometimes, the gods of speed just can't keep up. That's when luck meets talent in the race against risk. So who decides what safe is? The rider out front? The guy in second place? God? This place turns out podiums full of gods for fun. So if you look, going back to 57, the first 100 mile an hour lap, it goes up by 10 miles an hour every 20 years, maybe a little bit less. So, you know, we're looking at 76 with John Williams doing the first 110, 89, Steve Hislop doing the first 120, 2007, John McGuinness with the 130. So that's pretty crazy. We're, you know, we're approaching 20 years since the first 130 mile an hour lap. I remember people saying, you'll never get 120, it's too fast, it's impossible. It's physically impossible for bikes to go that fast around the Isle of Man TT. <laughs> When 135 came along, nobody could believe it, but a select few immediately started thinking how to go even quicker. We'll never see a 137, can't be done, said nobody. Physics doesn't scrutineer. Physics doesn't care if it's a superbike or a stocker. The fact that it's a super stock, you know, holds the lap record, crazy. Yeah, see, you say they're only just on a super stock bike, but they are... Super stock bikes are so fast now. Like, my, my super stock bike's as fast as my super bike, really. There is not, not really anything between the super stock and the super bike these days. There was absolutely no shadow of a doubt what Peter did was phenomenal. It was a really incredible lap. To do 136 on a super stock bike, it shows the level that Peter's at in himself. Uh, that would be impressive. It was impressive to be fair. It really makes you realise how fast the super stock bikes are now. I can't comment on 136 because it's I'm not in that ballpark to to say. A lap record race is our favourite movie. We know how it starts and how it ends. It's the amount of time it takes to play out in between that grips us all. What and who makes a winner faster? The rider at the front or the number two nipping at his heels. When there's a Dunlop involved, you can guarantee lap records are there for the taking. Michael Dunlop on a 600 is a thing of forceful, angry beauty. Is that 130 mile an hour super sport lap the most incredible lap anybody has ever seen? Well, this is just my opinion. I, I think it's more impressive that they've done 130 mile an hour on a 600. Yeah, Michael's um, 600 lap time um, that 130 on 600 is... That is fast. Yeah, when you think it wasn't that long ago that John did the first 130 mile an hour lap on a superbike and now they're doing it on super sport bikes. Oh, that's an excellent way. I remember when John McGuinness had the 130 sign and he did it on the superbike and it's like... I don't know, I was riding hard at that, yeah. And I had probably 190 horsepower. And they've got 140 horsepower and they're doing the same. Big boy stuff. On a kiddie's bike. <laughs> <laughs> corner speed you need to run on a 600 to do 130 mile an hour. Like I know what it's like to do 128 or whatever I've done. I'm moving, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Someone's gone another 20 seconds faster. That's impressive. Yeah, cause I know I did 129.7, so I just shot 130 on mine. 
and I know how hard I rode to do that, so to get to the 130 is impressive. But I've seen Michael, I've followed him, I know what it looks like. Well, I followed him for a few sections. Uh, I tapped out. I was like, uh, I was with him from end of Cronky Body. He just pulled away at Ginger Hall and I sort of thought, now I'm out. I'm, I'm like, that's enough, because, <laughs> you know, there was not a lot left. And uh... he passed me in both of them races and I was like, <laughs> you know, I think it was amazing. And like, he just tucked in the bubble. He was so, so determined. You know, determination put a mile an hour onto that. Just she had willing the bloody thing along. He's the man at the moment on the 600, and most people know that, especially him. And, you know, it's, he's the one to beat at the minute, I think. I've ridden a competitive 600. I wasn't able to fulfill my own targets and then to see how far sort of he's put that benchmark out there is that's that's impressive yeah i think that's an incredible achievement absolutely extra special because his corner speed is exceptional uh, and he keeps eking a little bit out because that bike hasn't got any quicker if you think about it, it's got 140 brake horsepower the super bike's got 212 so he's got to be flat out 90% of the time, you've got to be fully committed. You're absolutely wringing the neck of it. You know, you're asking everything from, from such a, a small capacity CC machine. You've got to push it so much harder through the corners on the little bike to ke keep your momentum going. At least the big bike, you can I always say you can meerkat it, you, know, you can shut the throttle, have a look, and get back on it again, whereas the 600, you're just buried in the screen, it's full commitment. Well, we ride a 600 for a start, and I know there's two of us on it, and you're, you're a long way off his pace, but to get a 600 to do that is... You're committed, aren't you? Yeah. Corner speed, you've got to carry for that. It's just incredible. You can't, it's ultimate respect for him to be able to do that. <laughs> you're not making that up on, on the straights. <laughs> but no, Michael's brought that to the party. His bike suddenly didn't get another 20 horsepower. I, I don't understand how they can do it. Getting that 130, not a lot of people go over 130, you know, even big bikes and all, it just seems to be, so for me to get my 600 up there, it's, it's pretty cool now. Add a third wheel and an extra pair of hands, and you'd think the load would get lighter. Not a chance. Sidecar racers are the unsung, screaming heroes of the TT, rarely getting the limelight they deserve, but always putting on a show. The 120 mile an hour lap is something that I know they've been pestered about for years, because I've been pestering about it for as long as I can remember. It's the elephant in the room, that is. This has been going on for years now. <laughs> Given the quality at the very top of the Isle of Man Sidecar TT, I expected it to happen sooner, <laughs> you know? I don't understand how that 600 engine can hold two people doing 120 around the TTE course. To do one, 120 mile an hour twos up, yeah, that's, that's properly impressive. And, you know, with two teams that have done it now. Founds and Wormsley as well, absolutely astonishing. That took me by surprise. I thought we were all expecting the Birchills to do it, and then the next thing, Pete Founds chucked in as well, and his passenger. Brilliant. I was like, bloody hell, it's two crews who have done it. It is phenomenal. The, the sidecar boys are just, again, a law to themselves. The virtual boys are just sensational. They're just proper on it. It's that, like... But it's pretty special that they've done it on the, the 100th anniversary of sidecars, which is pretty cool when you look back at John's 130 was on the 100th year of the TT, so that's pretty cool. I'm not just sure that people appreciate what an achievement that is. Two men on a 600cc motorcycle with around 130 horsepower, rubber this wide, that it, you are committed to do that. Absolutely, no. Them boys worked so, so hard to try and get the ultimate out of that. And I mean, I had a look with the fairing off and the way they've angled the engine and the frame, and it's a little bit different to what it was before, and that they're constantly evolving it, trying to get that tiny little bit more power out of it. And that was on full send, and it just felt perfect. The 
fantastic achievement, obviously, because you have to be riding so damn hard every millimetre of the track, and that is, yeah, yeah, it's a special achievement, definitely. Ben and Tom Birchall, their 11th TT win in a row. It takes them to a total of 14. Two times breaking the lap record this week. The first ever outfit into 120 mile an hour. Absolutely epic. Jumped out of the bike and looked at each other and went, that's it. That is it. And it's like, it's so nice to be able to get back into that, that envelope, you know. Because it takes from doing, you know, <laughs> you're not messing about. Full send, all the way to the end. Whether it's 130 on a 600, 136 on a stocker, or double top in the chair. They do just enough to win the race, blowing our minds in the process. To be quite honest with you, I knew it was going to happen this year. Purely for the fact that last year, obviously, we were, everyone was coming back from Covid. So we had years off and stuff. And oh, I think it was you know, the next step, but you'd never put that beyond being achieved because it was always going to come, uh, it was just who was going to do it. And records, as we said earlier, they're always going to be broken. It's like everyone, you know, records are there to be broken, tracks getting better, bikes are supposed to be getting better, you know, every, every lap record is going to go at some point. I think we're putting too much emphasis on it. I think we just should let the riders ride. If a lap record gets broken, then it gets broken, great. And often the records come, you know, you've heard the guys say in the past, it came as they were flowing and it just came to them. If, say for instance, Michael was streets above everybody else and there was nobody pushing him, he'd just do enough to win. I get people say, oh, are you going to go break the lap record? And I'm like, well, if it needs to be broken to win the race, then yeah. I've been in a position where I've had a 25, 30 second lead and I don't have to go fast in the last lap, which is the best feeling in the world because you're not chasing it, you're not revving the bike, you're not, you know, you're just in a little rhythm and you're just heading towards the finish line with a smile on your face. Anybody breaking records in any class, it's pretty much on a level. The frustrating thing is you don't get a bonus, you don't get a Brucey bonus, <laughs> you just get a pat on the back. Well, I've, I've held a black record, I think, on seven occasions and had something like 15 fastest laps around here, it means nothing, it means nothing. It's not about the lap record, it's about beating your opponent, and you beat your opponent at the slowest possible pace. It doesn't matter if you win it by a minute or win it by two seconds, you still win the race. So if I could win the race at 100 mile an hour average, I'd win it at 100 mile an hour average and keep the risk down. You know, obviously the faster you go, the more risky there is, obviously. Winning's more important, always was more important to me. Whenever you've got two lads like the hizzy and foggy year, you know what I mean? Everyone's pushing each other on. It's like, well, I want to beat you, so I'm going to push it on further, and Michael's going to push it on, Peter wants to push it on, and it, it's always going to escalate to, to go faster and faster and faster and faster. Obviously, the weather conditions were fantastic, so that makes it happen, doesn't it? You know, So it was always going to be a fast year this year, and it'll be the same next year. Everyone wants to win it, everyone's going to push on. You've got the new pretenders like Davy Todd coming along as well, it's going to push it up as well, and it never, never stops, does it? It's going to be fantastic again, it's going to be aces again, as long as we get some decent weather. The boys get plenty of laps under the belt, the track will get rubbered in, the track's faster, smoother, unreal. Again, we keep repeating myself, but records are there and keep getting broken. Everything has to be right, but the, those lap times are going up and it won't be that far. If history is right, we'll see the first 140 mile an hour lap at the Isle of Man TT. The game always steps up somewhere along the line, keeps stepping up and stepping up, so, you know, I think all records are there to be broken everybody there to be beat, so I think that's just the, the moral of the story. Swapping over the bikes is completely unique to any other race in the world, wherever you go, you know. It's There's no choice, is there? You have to do it. You either get on and crack on and make it work, or else you're not going to win anything. TT just ambles along, the not it? it just, everything gets changed as it goes along. There are so many things outside of just being on the motorcycle. The TT is a true test of man and machine. Look, that's just a game. It's different to everything else. <laughs>